Now the idea for today's project all started with this very old book here. It's called Eaton's Common School Arithmetic and as you can see um, it's very faded, very old and I got this from a lady who deals with antique books but because it's in such bad condition it's really not worth anything especially not to collectors. Uh, here in the front you can see that it was published in 1878, so it is a uh, real antique, over 100 years old. Now the pages are very delicate, they kind of halfway fall apart. I don't even know if all those pages are there because as you can see it has uh, no spine anymore. Yeah, the paper really flakes. But I love the cover. I think it's just so cool, even though it's so used and old. I want to use it to make a little album. Now, I want to strengthen it because these uh, covers will otherwise not survive. The corners were so soft, I could have just uh, broken them off. But as you can see here, I'm using my Mod Podge to add them to all those individual bits and pieces that originally made up the cardboard. And that brings a lot of stability back to this uh, cover. I of course treated all the corners like this. Now they are dry and quite sturdy. I also cut some cardboard a little bit larger than the covers. I cut some cardboard strips to build up the empty part there until it has the right thickness. Uh, this way I get a nice flat surface. I also gain some extra space inside my album and I can put the holes for the rings into this very sturdy cardboard rather than into the old covers. Next I use just my tacky glue to put it all together and then I will use some book binding tape to give it extra protection and help with the look. I picked that tape because it's extremely sturdy and also has a nice linen feel to it. Now the idea for this album is to create uh, plenty of storage space. So it's not very detailed, it's not going to have any fancy folds or pullouts or you name it. It's going to be a fairly rustic, simple construction. And I will show you the very basics of it, but then I will jump ahead and give you a show and tell of the final uh, album. And I think it will give you all the information you need should you want to do something like this as well. The charm of this album will be in the materials I will store inside of it and I will give you a really close look at all of those towards the end. All the steps I take here are self-explanatory. Anything you need to know will be in the captions and I will talk to you in just a wee bit. Enjoy!
is the little album all completed. I made it to keep all my old papers in, meaning vintage or even antique bits and bobs. I'm not an antique collector at all, but I like old books, especially really old books like this one. I also like stationery, photos, handwritten letters, those kind of things. And I find them and I rummage around for junk for my assemblage pieces. So especially all the little bits, not necessarily the full books or maps or magazines I find, but the small pieces they fit nicely into this album. Now I didn't glue down anything. All of the pieces in here can be taken out just in case I want to do something else with them in the future. Of course I had to work and glue down this cover so it would stay and also so it wouldn't fall apart. So here it is again one more time. You saw it earlier and not much changed on the cover except I added a little uh, rubber buff in gold to it, to all the edges, and then these two pan tips right here. And of course it has a closure, just made from two clips and a chain, and there's a little a piece, it's an end piece, uh, from an old necklace. So let's take a look inside. As you can see here, I darkened all the edges of the pages by using my Distress ink. And then here on the first page I added a vintage jewelry piece. And of course this page, which belongs to the Mars book, tells me that it was published in 1878, which makes it antique. So I have an antique cover on here, but most items in here are vintage, meaning they're not yet 100 years old. Some are quite a bit younger, but they're older than 20 years, so that makes them vintage. So I have some really lovely photos, not too many, just a few, and these are actual photos. These are strangers, they're not related to me, but these are not photocopies or taken from a book, like this lovely little girl. So I added her to the album by using photo corners so I can take the photo out again if I need to. Next, I just added some really simple belly bands. Well, actually, belly bands go this way. I don't know what you call this ones, but you know what I mean. And corner bands, just to keep some things in place. So here I have some handwritten notes from a schoolboy studying maybe for a test or maybe it was homework. Uh, it looks to me like a history lesson. It talks about some Roman Empire, it talks about uh, Calvary, so it could be old American history as well. Who knows? So here it is. I won't be able to read all this to you because otherwise my video would take way too long. And then this is a cool photo of those sailors with their girlfriends. Love those bathing suits. <laughs> So that lives here. And as you can see, there's plenty of room for more things, which hopefully I find in the future. Then here are the two envelopes. Now I added some paper brads to them so I can close them. And I also added some vintage lace over the black tape just to get away from the dark black. So let's see what's in here. Oh, here we have a love letter. It's written 41186. It starts with, hello my love, well how are you on this fine bright sunny morning? Say, and then it says, I wished you were here and so on and so on. So it's a long love letter written by someone. Let's see, what was his name? It's funny, I think the name is not on here. Oh no, love always Jack. There it is. So dear Jack wrote to his girlfriend or wife, but I cannot find her name because he calls her my love. So that is, so it's there. And then let's see what we have in here. Oh, these are food stamps. Well, they're not the type of food stamps we talk about uh, today, but these were stamps you would get when you go to the grocery store and then at home you would put them in a little booklet and when the booklet was full, you would get some refund or some kind of Reward. So it was very common. I remember we had these in Germany as well and my mom was collecting those things. So it must have been the 60s or I don't know if they still existed uh, much later than that. Probably before that. 
and here's a cool old postcard. Now this is rather old. I was trying to find the date on it. It's not on it, but I went online and it's either late 1800s or early 1900s. So this could, could be an antique, not 100% sure. And here are more pages. I think uh, these ones, let's see, I did look over them. Oh yeah, this is biology. It talks about flowers and trees, different things. Again, probably either it's homework or, um, you know, notes for preparing for a test or what have you. Here is one of those old-fashioned paper clips. Cool photo of this guy with this fancy car. I wished I would be able to tell you what type of car it is. I'm sure somebody out there will know. And let's see what we have here. It's a country store form. Now it says the edition is March 23. So it's quite old, so nearly 100 years old. And you were able to order different things, I believe. Now somebody used it to make some uh, mathematical uh, drawings on here, as you can see. So that's pretty cool. Let me keep it out so it's a little faster. Another cool photo of the working man. And I added some of these older looking clips. Now this is just a preface of the math book and it starts by saying there's a large class of pupils whose limited time renders it impossible for them to pursue in an extended mathematical course. But the author and so on 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 went to write the best uh, textbook ever to make it possible for these big classes to be taught. So that's pretty interesting and their wording is just so fun. So there's also a content list so I kept this in here and then this is again from a student and he was a smart kid. His name was Dominic and he did this test. It's a vocabulary test in Latin and he got 100% and it was written 1st of April 1931. So quite a long time ago. So good for him. He was good in Latin. Now, when I got to these little folders, which I made with you earlier, I added the lace. The reason is that not only do I like the look, but also it strengthened the edges because they were really breaking after I bent them over. But that was the only way to get this uh, bound into this book. Here I also did an old piece of jewelry. It's just a studded stone. So let's see what we have next. These are um, score papers. I'm not 100% sure what kind of um, game it was. I think some kind of card game. It doesn't say anywhere. So maybe bridge? I'm not sure. I'm not really an expert on card games. But they're quite old too. Probably 50s, 60s. This is an invitation to a literary guild. Pretty cool looking. Here's another one of these folders and again a piece of jewelry. Let's see what we have in here. Another one of those clips. Oh yeah, these are the pages you use to send telegrams on. Post a telegraph, commercial cables. And here you had a choice of telegram, day letter, night message, night letter. Yep. Now I can't find exactly a date on this either, but I would think it's at least 60s if not older. And again, somebody used it to work on their math problems, some equations here, some drawings on the back. Yep, yeah, there's no date. I already looked earlier. So yeah, somewhere around there. And then this one, again, it's a uh, a telegram paper from Western Union. This one was never filled out. It's definitely 19 something, obviously, but that's what it says there. And yeah, and it shows you what you need to watch out for and what are your rights and so on. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Telegrams are really something that is not used anymore. We leave this. And then I have two envelopes here. This one says loose leaf ring patches, five cents. But when I got it, it didn't have any patches in it. But this little writing, 
bits of papers and I mean it's written so small and it is schoolwork so I am thinking somebody was doing uh, some cheat papers you know how you write your um, information on tiny bits of papers you so you can refer to it maybe I don't know and then this is a typical old uh, fashion envelope you used to get when you buy stamps and it has some stamps in it but these are taken from so I kept them in there so that can go here so let's see what else we have come on and oh this is a cool uh, photo I like this with the four sailors having a good time and here's another photo, dear K. Marie. Uh, now I have no clue how old this is. The way it's made, it looks really old. I remember seeing things like that when my mom was a kid, which I would think was around 1930s, something like that. And this, an old um, pair here. Now I remember this tile of photo as well from my grandparents so again it could have been taken in the 30s or 40s maybe in the 50s. Here's the money return envelope. Uh, please enclose the right amount. I'm not sure exactly what it was meant for but I kept it in here. And two more envelopes here again I used the uh, old-fashioned lace, some metal paper brads here and this little pocket is interesting this is Denver Public High School excuse blank East High School June 19th 1940 from the principal office dear Jane or Jamie or James not sure was tardy so he got the slip and this is from 19, it says 193 blank, so 1930 something. It's M&M Grocery and Market Sudden Service uh, little form. So the clerk had to put some in. It says eggs, butter, and then is a blankie on the bottom. It's pretty cool. So that's pretty old too, that thing. And then there is another absentees. I think it had to be, be signed by by a teacher. Not sure how old that is either. Anyway, we'll keep those in here. Oops, I'll do it later. And then what we have here. These are not quite as old, but still, they're not around anymore. I'm sure they're at least 20 years old. There's guest checks, kitchen checks, just normal receipts with a little carbon backing. And this is some stationery. Uh, from some kind of business so I'll keep those in there and then we have another one of these old clips and here in the back I just kept one of those airmail envelopes I actually still remember using those in the 60s even early 70s but I know they're not around anymore this is just an old envelope another one of those clips and then here we have a little metal heart it's also a vintage piece of jewelry and of course Helen's address here I kept that and that is pretty much it and as you can see they are a little stubborn these uh, jump rings to not come on it wasn't this bad before okay don't give me any trouble and here's of course the uh, back of the book and again it has this gold robin buff on it so that's it. That's my little album. I think it came out really cool. I really like it. And yeah, if, whenever I found little bits, they will go in here, of course. Now before I go, I want to show you what else I found over the last few couple years, maybe. Again, I don't uh, actively pursue old books, but when I find them, I think they're so cool. This one I actually picked up last week at... Uh, garage sale very close to my place and it's called I don't even know the title is on the inside somewhere see see it has a cool picture here and one of those thin pages diary of kitty Travelin, and it's published 1876 so that makes this an antique book and I just love the look of it and I might even read it one day so I love the way they used to decorate the covers, so cool. 
Then I have this one, it's called Keeping Up With Lizzie. I got this uh, actually a while ago and it doesn't look so old but it was published in 1911 which makes it an antique. Very cool. And then here we have Besides the Bonnie Briar Bush and it has an address in it and let's see 1895 so again an antique book love the cover this is so cool last days of Pompeii the color is just really cool and it's nearly engraved with all the leaves up here and here it says illustrated on it and if I open this one now it's not in perfect condition it also has an address a lot of water damage but some cool little um, illustrations and it's published 1834 so that makes it nearly 200 years old that's really good just another 15 years to go and then this is an old German book and they used to have this very different type of print I don't know if you can see it it's even a little bit hard for me to read it I can read it but it's quite different to the way we print today and let's see this is from 1892 so again a really old book an antique and then I have this is the only um, children's book I have and it looks a lot newer and it is a little newer but it's still old this is from well the writing was 1957 and I think it was published a year before that or something yeah 1956 so I was two years old <laughs> and it's called The Pasture for Petakin and I think it's a sheep or maybe a cow it has some really or maybe it's a cow <laughs> it has some cool black and white illustrations in it so those are my finds I've collected what I'm going to do with it I'm not sure yet these are not the type of books I will take apart for that I use way younger books uh, but maybe I find uh, some uh, collector who might like this one of these days all right that's all I had for today sorry the end was so long but I thought if I once get into little vintage and antique paper bits and bobs I might as well include the books because I'm most likely not going to pick up this uh, idea again anytime soon so thank you very much for coming I hope you enjoyed today's uh, video maybe the construction of this journal gave you some ideas maybe you have some little special tidbits you want to keep safe somewhere so I hope it was helpful please come and see me soon again latest by next Friday have a wonderful week bye bye for now <laughs>